let's just say I make a movie and I sell 1 million copies. Okay, now I'm gonna go for 2 million. How do I do that? I gotta find ways to cater it to the masses. So, I'm gonna be talking about video game prequels slash sequels that caters to the masses. Okay, I'm gonna use Gears of War Judgment for an example since I plan on buying this game for my first 2013 video game purchase. Right now, the Gears community is quite mixed with this. They took Execution slash Warzone and King of the Hill, which were all the original and classic game modes from Gears 1 and 2. They also added crosshairs, well, you can't see them too clearly compared to aiming your gun, but it's there. And they took out um, the down but not out but not out feature, which is where you would get quote unquote killed and you would be down, but the enemy has to go over to your body and execute you. Since that's gone, execution moves are essentially gone from the game too. Not gonna lie, Epic is changing quite a bit of stuff compared to the other Gears of War games. But I think a lot of them seems fine. I've seen videos of Judgment and the gameplay is still like Gears of War. But it is somewhat refined, which is a good thing. Gears of War multiplayer has always been shotgun driven and since Down But Not Out is gone and there's crosshairs on the gun, I think we will see a more variety of people using different weapons than just the shotgun. I'm personally excited to try the multiplayer for that purpose, even though I don't play the multiplayer that much when it comes to Gears of War, but I do play it sometimes. I also don't understand why they took out the Locust characters, because I've always liked playing them, and that is somewhat of a shame, really. Still though, I really want to try it out and see what Epic is trying to do with the changes. However, I can't appreciate the fact they killed the classic game modes. That's just a slap in the face. Imagine Halo with no Team Slayer or Quake with no Duel or Free For All. That's so stupid of them to do that and I have a feeling, I bet you, they're going to make a DLC where we have to pay for those game modes because Epic forced us to buy weapon skins in Gears 3 but in the beta, it was in the game. How greedy. Don't get me wrong, I like Epic, but they've been pulling off some greedy BS lately, so back on topic. I did enjoy playing Execution, and if you don't know what's that, it's basically demolition from Counter-Strike, but there is a twist to it. First of all, you have to execute your enemy to completely kill them, and that's it pretty much. I also find it funny that they replaced King of the Hill with Domination. Gee, I wonder where that is from, and believe it or not, there's three flags on the map, and... You need to control them for gaining points to win the game. How original. So far, Judgment seems to be a worthy purchase for me. It does still feel like a Gears game, but that's an example of what changes the developers are doing to this prequel to cater it to the masses. Halo 4 is guilty of this too. I mean, the bolt shot is like a weapon that takes no skill. It's really easy to use and it's so deadly in close range. It's actually better than the scatter shot, which is the Promethean shotgun, and it's a power weapon. Enough said. Then you got hit markers, which I don't see the purpose of them, although the grenades do seem reasonable, but why for the guns really? Then kill cams, so pointless. But I do wish they bring back the final kill cams since they were actually reasonable. However, I think Halo 4 is really a Halo game at its heart, even though there are some stuff that feels kind of cottish, but it really does work. Like, I can find this armor ability useless in multiplayer, but when I bring it to Spartan Ops, it's useful, and I really appreciate how they try to make the class system work well for both modes, and it does make it different than what Call of Duty is doing. I don't think there's anything wrong with customizable classes. I mean, I think developers are just tired of starting you with a default weapon, and all you gotta do is look for better weapons, armor slash health, power-ups, etc. Overall, I truly believe it needs to be like 70-80% to 80 focus to the fans and 20-30% to 30 to the new audience since making games is a job. With the addition of obvious sequel stuff like trying to keep the game new and fresh compared to the last game. I also believe there are games that just fail at doing this, like Crisis 2, oh my god, the multiplayer is just Call of Duty with nano suits, and then you have the new GoldenEye game, it's just bare bones Call of Duty. Oh, and the new Ninja Gaiden 3. I can't believe they made this game 
easier. I mean, the Ninja Gaiden series has a reputation for being difficult. How could you, like, fail that reputation so badly? Also, the multiplayer component, it's just full of fail, really. Then you have Dark Souls 2, following the same route of what Ninja Gaiden 3 is doing. Let's just hope developers try to find that right balance to cater to new players and old players. Obviously, old players are going to, you know, support the developers the most, but it is kind of sad that the developers kind of ignore them at times, but I don't know, man. We'll see what happens in next gen. I really hope that um, developers don't try way too hard to cater to new players, because let's face it, at the end of the day, the old players have the most passion for the games. They're really going to be the one that's going to play your game a lot and really push themselves. And I think that's like a mark of a good game right there because a lot of games that I play really do that. And I definitely don't want, you know, th those games to let me down because at the end of the day, I really want that same experience too, but also have a new experience to keep the experience fresh, really. Anyways, that's it for the video, and I will see you guys later.